Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Two men were shot, one fatally, by gunmen this morning in Augustown, St. Andrew. Shortly after 1 o'clock, the two men were walking along Augustown Road after attending a party when they were confronted by men with high-powered rifles. The injured men were taken to hospital where one of them was pronounced dead. A minor earthquake was felt across several parishes this morning. The tremor occurred about 6.45. A preliminary report from the earthquake unit at the University of the West Indies, Mona, said it had a magnitude of 4.2. Head of the unit, Professor Simon Mitchell, said the epicenter was on the border of St. Anne and St. Catherine. It had a magnitude of 4.2. The depth we have at the moment is 26.6 kilometers. Um, the epicenter was just west of Guy's Hill right on the border of St. Anne and St. Catherine, but really in St. Anne. And we have records of it being felt at both Clarendon, St. Anne, Kingston, St. Mary, Portland, St. Andrew, and St. Catherine. Um, we haven't had any evidence or reports of any damage, so it probably was just a shake. It's the depth of it at 26.6 means it wouldn't have been felt as strongly if it had been shallower. I mean, it's another one of the ones we feel each year. So we, we feel earthquakes each year. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson has put the brakes on specific public exhibitions of the police while dealing with offences under the Road Traffic Act. He will, however, allow for his officers to exercise discretion under appropriate circumstances. The Commissioner's statement is in reaction to public outrage over the decision not to prosecute a man who identified himself as the motorist on video performing stunts on a road in the corporate area. It has raised questions about how the police use their discretion and the effectiveness of the new head of the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch. Commissioner Anderson says the police apply discretion daily to several motorists for breaches of the Road Traffic Act. However, he is firm that such a situation will not be repeated. This is not an approach that we will continue uh, in terms of that, uh, that sort of um, public approach to it. Um, with, but there will still be, of course, there still remain, in some cases, the opportunity to exercise some discretion in, with, our, with our officers. We don't remove that totally. But that, even that has to be exercised with discretion. The Ministry of Finance and the Economic Program Oversight Committee, EPOC, have signed an agreement to extend monitoring of the economic reform program. The extension comes as Jamaica is on course to complete the precautionary standby agreement with the IMF in November. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark was unable to say when the extension will with end. previous EPOC agreements where they are on a 12-month renewable basis, but they... The intent is for EPOC to serve for as, as long as it takes before we have our fiscal council operationalize and our central, both fiscal council operationalize and central bank uh, governance strengthened and independence in place. EPOC will continue to serve as an interim oversight committee to monitor and report to the public. When the government is able to begin operating a fiscal council, it will absorb the current functions of EPOC. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, I uh, expect to be able to table legislation on the fiscal council by April of next year. And then we have to leave the passage to the parliament, which is, uh, is obviously independent. Right? IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde has praised the establishment and work of EPOC. Promised work on the Ligony Bridge in St. Andrew has been placed on hold. The National Works Agency, NWA, recently announced plans to build a new bridge on Ligony Avenue in September. However, Prime Minister Andrew Hurness says he has requested that the project be put on hold. So, we understand that we need to wrap up very quickly the massive roadworks that are taking place 
in Kingston. That will ease traffic flow, improve efficiency. And we certainly understand that coming up to back to school, though people would want to see that particular bridge, uh, is it Sandy Gully? And Ligani Avenue, that, that bridge be done because, again, it's a narrow bridge built over 50 years ago. And, you know, people complain about it, but at the same time, people want to be sure that the carrying capacity of the city is not impacted by these works. And so I've sent a note to the NWA to say no more new works, put them on hold a little bit, let's finish up what we have, allow the back to school to happen seamlessly, and then after that, we will carry out the road works in a selected way and in a way that does not in any way impact the smooth and seamless flow of traffic in the city. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. We'll have more stories right after these messages. Welcome back, and we're continuing the news. The government is to embark on a program of drought alleviation as the dry spell is now affecting almost 70% of the country. Minister Without Portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister, Daryl Vaz, says it's affecting sections of St. Elizabeth, Manchester, Clarendon, St. Catherine, Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Thomas, Portland, St. Mary, as well as St. Anne. Details of the drought alleviation program are to be announced shortly. Farmers continue to count their losses in the aftermath of a massive fire in Flagerman, St. Elizabeth, last week. The Agriculture Ministry has put preliminary losses from the fire at $45 million. Speaking to TVJ News during a tour of the burnt grounds, one farmer provided details about the extent of the damage. I spent $20,000 at least the land and everything burned out. When time I watched the fire coming down to hit, we couldn't do nothing because there was no water either. And when they try to get the fire truck, them, there's a black river truck um, have some fault, mechanical, mechanical fault. And then after that, they said black river truck come in. And then after that, no, junction truck come first before. And then the waterman them come and help us over there. And when I stand up out there and watch my grass and the rest of the land them burning, and see the fire jump the road. You see the first that they make? It never go across. The second, it never go across. The third, it just weep over. All the tall coconut tree, as tall as the coconut tree is, the fire went up in a hit. We, lose, we lost everything. Everything. So we're going back to square one. Residents of Hopewell in Highgate, St. Mary, continue to grapple with the drought as some of the parish's major rivers are dry. Members or Member of Parliament for Central St. Mary, Dr. Morris Guy, gave an update. Water is, is um, the one that runs um, towards Robins Bay. Um, the, there is the, the river down by Richmond, which is dry. In addition, some residents claim they have no water in water their pipes. Water dry again. Pipe dry. The reservoir dry. We can't get no water. So far for water. Me live in Opel, yeah, I get. And water have to come from Fort George and not to be away. Go and give me a drink. In former times when um, residents could not get water through the main, they would resort to going to the rivers. Um, those rivers are practically dried up. So we are caught between a rock and a hard place right now. What is saving us or what has saved us is that um, the NWC had uh, some time ago drilled a well just south of the the, where the, the springs are, and this is what now is providing the significant um, water that that system is able to supply. Meanwhile, the Central St. Mary MP is also making an appeal to the National Water Commission, NWC, to urgently repair leaking pipes. Mr. Guy explains that once the leakages are repaired, there would be no need to chuck so much water to residents. It would be difficult for me to fault them in terms of, of, of their response. However, what I'd like for them to do on a more timely basis is to repair the leaks that occur. Because if you repair the leaks, whatever little water you have in the system, then you'll have more to go around and it will be cheaper for them than trucking water. So if they repair the leaks on a, t 
a more timely basis, then their, their pockets would, be, would not be impacted as much. And secondly, there'd be peace and harmony among the residents who would usually get water from those systems. Another case of dust nuisance from bauxite mining is causing serious problems for some residents in South Manchester. The residents contend that their livelihood and health are being impacted. You know, go and work with me. You know, go and work. When you go in my house, dust, set my body into dust. No comp compensation. Mr. Howard Nicholson is one resident being affected by the bauxite mining in Sweetland District. He told TVJ News that his wife, who is asthmatic, has been dealing with the dust from the work being carried out by Jamalco. If we can't get no justice, we are blocking every day. No more mining here. Or some is it. And it is affecting our community so badly. They have no love for our community and we need justice. I know that Jamalco should offer us three things. Irrigation water, road, and a community center. So we are nobody. They take us for a fool. Jamaica do not love we. They don't love them. We can't talk to nobody. We, we need justice. No. We need justice. No. The residents also contend that their water sources are being affected, forcing them to buy water. The dust affect them stomach. The mafia got doctor. No care can come in after them. We have to carry them out to get taxi, to go to clinic, doctor, big man, water. No God, man. It can't, can't work. I'll meet you. Sometimes when we spit, I read. Renovation work on the Black River Transport Center on Brigade Street, St. Elizabeth, to accommodate public transport operators is yet to begin. This almost a year after confirmation was given by the St. Elizabeth Municipal Corporation. In September last year, Mayor Derek Sangster said that work to renovate the transport center would commence in the first quarter of 2019. Efforts to contact the mayor and the chief executive officer of the municipal corporation, Errol Liebert, proved futile. And in sports, last season's Red Stripe Premier League runners-up Waters House, Waterhouse will host Costa Rican club Herediano in the first leg of the 16th tie of the Conca Cup League at the National Stadium today. Head coach of Waterhouse, Marcel Gale, says he's hoping that his senior players will step up to get results. The team is um, settling um, nicely. As I said, we start a little bit early. Um, we have about 95% of the squad is is present at training. Um, yeah, the new players, um, I mean, Andre Moulton, I mean, Colorado Murray, I mean, their level of maturity and, 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 and their experience. I mean, with the, with the guys here, I mean, it's going to go far away. I mean, stick more close together and, and just pay attention to details. And, you know, I think they, 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 they can help carry us all the way this, um, this time around. He is also hoping for the support. I mean, it's not just Waterhouse versus um, HS Ariana from Costa Rica. It's like Jamaica versus Costa Rica. So I'm asking um, the public um, everywhere, I mean, from, from the 13th, 14th parts of Jamaica to come support Waterhouse. Match time is 5 p.m. and the return leg is set for August 29. That's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.